a live creative time today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. It's great to be with you again today. I have got a really cute project for you today. Um, well, we're playing with a really cute suite. The project um, is in my head but uh, I was having a little play around last night and things kind of weren't going how I had planned. So then I came up with a different idea. So we're going to run with that today. Um, so while everybody is finding their notifications that I've gone live, I will just bring this up, um, this live stream up on my other devices so that I can see everyone's comments there. So bear with me one moment and I'll just bring that up. Um, and it appears that I actually got on live first time today. Amazing. So um, the last few times I've tried going live on my YouTube channel, it's taken me several attempts to get online. So I was expecting the same today, but all good. So I think I'm getting the hang of this. <laughs> all right, let me just bring this up. Um, and... I'll just see if I can see this live here. Awesome. Okay, everything is working and I'll just bring it up here as well. So I've got my AirPods in today because I've noticed that when I flip the camera down to the desk, the sound has been going in and out a little bit and it's really annoying. Um, and I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. So I thought, well, I'll sync my AirPods before I start today. Um, and hopefully that will um, fix the problem. So hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, so if you are here live with me today, let me know if you can hear me. Okay. Um, and hopefully the sound. Okay, I'll just, and um, hopefully the sound will stay level the whole time today. So, all righty. Okay, so everything is set up, everything is looking okay, so all good. All right, well, today we are going to be playing with, oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't grab my catalogue. I knew I'd forget something. Hang on a sec, I'll scoot on over and grab my catalogue. There we go. I knew I was going to forget something this morning. <laughs> Oh, hello, honeybees. Great to have you here all the way from Florida. Oh, fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we have got the brand new annual catalog um, live right now in case you haven't heard. So this is the Stampin' Up! Um, 2023 to 2024 annual catalog. Um, and this is available right now. So if you're here in Australia and you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to get one of these catalogues out to you. Now, all of my links will be in the description. Um, I haven't got all of them there just yet. I've got some of my links there, but all the rest of my links will be there um, after the end of the, the video, the live stream. Um, so you'll be able to click on that link and there is a video request link there. Um, well, it will be there when I finish. Uh, so yeah, so feel free to check that out. There are so many beautiful products in this catalogue um, and yeah, it's just such a beautiful catalogue, such a variety as well of different types of products. So um, something for everybody, which is super awesome. Um, oh, you're catching all the lives tonight, honeybees. That's great. Fantastic. That's really good. Um, yeah, so that's come, that's available right now. Um, and remember too, that there is also products available in the online store, in the online exclusives that you won't find in a catalog or you won't find featured in a catalog, but they're available there in the online store as well. So, um, be sure to check that out too. Now we're going to be playing with a really cute suite today from the annual catalog. It's called um, Zoo Crew. And I actually have a class coming up with that, um, using that suite. So this is my Zoo Crew card class. Um, it's coming up really, really soon. And the uh, registration closes on the 16th of May. So if you want to get in on this one, be sure to register. Again, I'll put the link up in the description of this video. Um, 
in this class, we are going to be creating six really, really cute, adorable cards, including a fun fold card using the Zoo Crew suite. And there's a little, a little snippet, a little sneaky peek of those projects there. Um, on Monday, I created a different project that wasn't part of the class, but an additional project. And we're going to be making another one again today as well, another different one. So if you do do this class, so you get those six projects and then you'll still have enough paper and products to be able to create these additional projects that I'm creating this week as well. So you get a couple of bonus projects. So there you go. Um, so yeah, so definitely check this one out. It's super cute. On the link will be all of the information about all of the, um, the class inclusions. Um, there's a couple of different options there as well. So if you are not here in Australia, there is an option there for you as well. As part of the class, you will get some designer series paper, some ribbon and some bling. Um, enough to create the projects plus have extra left over to go on and create other projects as well. So what I've done is I cut up my paper to the amount that everyone will get in the class and I've been creating just with that. Um, I'm actually going to have to buy some more of this beautiful paper because I'm nearly out. So um, yeah and so I wanted to see how many projects I could get out of this paper and we're using some of those scraps again today and then there's still going to be more to do more cards as well so you'll get plenty to create with in this class all right so what i'll do is i'll just bring up the link for the class and i'll put that in the comments right now as well so that if anybody is jumping on and you want to have a um a look i will um I'll put it in the comments there for you so you can take a look and see um, what's included in the class. And then let me see, how can I get rid of these? That's okay. I was gonna see if I could get rid of the comments on the screen, but it's not as easy as just a swipe on this on YouTube. When I film on Facebook, I can just swipe and get rid of them off the screen, but that doesn't work here, but that's okay. Oh, they faded now. All good. Um, yeah, so definitely check that out. All right. Um, I think that's the only news really that I have to share with you today. Um, we're going to be using a couple of additional products as well. I've got a punch that we're including today. Um, and I've got some other dies here and an embossing folder as well. So I'll talk about those as we do the class. They are additional items. Um, that I'm throwing in for today's project. But I have some inspiration for today's project from a very, very old project that I created many, many years ago. So I'll share that with you once I tip the camera down to the desktop. Um, now, people are still getting used to me going live over here on YouTube because usually I go live over on Facebook. And going live here on YouTube is um, a new thing for me. This is only my fourth, I think, today, my fourth live. Um, so people are still getting used to coming over here and finding me over here. Um, so yeah, so we might not have very many on, but hopefully everybody will find the replay. So um, thank you everyone who has um, joined me live and thank you for everybody watching the replay here as well. And I will share it over to Facebook also so that um, my Facebook followers can see it as well over there too. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, feel free to subscribe if you like what you see today. You'll find the red subscribe button down below the video. Um, so you can click on that and while you're there, click on the little bell notification so that you can get notified every time I upload a new video or when I go live as well. Um, so I film twice a week on Monday afternoons over on Facebook at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And then I share that over here to YouTube. And then on Thursday mornings at 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, I go live here on YouTube. Um, so, and then I share that back the other way. <laughs> Um, yeah, so if you are jumping on live, feel free to chat with me, craft along with me, or just sit back and relax and enjoy what I have to share with you today. Um, yeah, so we will um, 
get going shortly. Now, if you like what you see today and um, you love these products and you're thinking, oh, I really, I really would love to get those and you're not already a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, um, then please consider joining Stampin' Up! whether or not that's joining with my team or joining with um, your demonstrator if you already have a demonstrator. Um, but joining is actually the best value. You'll get the best value because not only do you um, get $66 worth of free product when you join. You get to choose the products that you want to put in your starter kit. Now, you don't have to do classes or do Facebook Lives or YouTube Lives like I do or anything like that. You can simply purchase products for yourself and enjoy a 20 to 25% discount on your purchases which is super awesome. Awesome. Now, if you're joining my team, you'll be joining a wonderful crafting community um, of beautiful, beautiful people. And we do lots of fun stuff together as a team. Um, we have a team Facebook group and I'm usually in there every day. And we have lots of um, things that we share in there and we share our projects and we encourage each other. We get ideas off each other. Um, we have creative challenges, we have monthly team gatherings where we um, um, have rec team recognitions, news, and uh, then we have a creative time together for a couple of hours. Um, we have got a team retreat coming up in August as well for our team members. So that's going to be super awesome. That's going to be a full day in person event. So that's going to be super awesome. So we're planning that at the moment. Um, so there's lots and lots of things. Plus, there's then all the demonstrator-only events that Stampin' Up! holds as well. Um, plus a demonstrator website. We get new product early. We get beautiful new catalogs early. We get complimentary catalogs. Um, and we get these early. And we get to order product early too um, from any new catalog so lots and lots of things happening, uh, lots of exciting reasons to join Stampin' Up! So if you have more questions about that or there's anything I can help you with, please let me know. I'd love to have a chat with you about that and answer any of your questions. So it's only $169 to join and you get to choose $235 worth of product in your starter kit. So you get that $66 worth of product free, plus you get free shipping on that first order as well. So some more great reasons to join. So let me know if you have more questions about that and we would love to welcome you to our Paper Craft Gems team. So um, yeah, so definitely get in contact with me about that. All right. Well, I think it's time to get crafting. Feel free to chat along with me. Um, I'll just pop my... Oh, actually, I'll leave my catalogue out because I'm going to show you which page we're going to be um, using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera down onto my desktop. I like to cover up the camera as I do that while I do the transitions just so I don't make you all dizzy because the camera bumps around a little bit um, and I've got to flip the... The, the, the view and all that sort of thing. So I'll cover up the camera so I don't make you all dizzy and um, we'll get started. All right, bear with me. Here we go. Now I have changed my stand today so that hopefully we have a better view than last week because last week my camera kept on falling all right there we go now I'll move my keyboard because we're finished with that for the moment we don't need that right now whoops I'm clicking buttons here all right and we'll just zoom zoom in a little there we go all right, now, unfortunately, you can see my iPad a little bit there, but see if I can just move that out of shot a tad. Move these up. All right, so any of the products that you see me using today, you can find in my online store. So if you go to mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com, um, oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't adjust the lights so that we've got light down on the desk. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, so you can find these products there. If you go to my blog and then at the top of my blog, you'll see um, the shop button. So you can click on that shop button 
um, that'll take you through to my online store and then you'll find all of the products there this is my may 2023 host code so when you're shopping with me if you use my host code when your order is over 75 dollars you will receive a thank you gift from me um, and as a special um, gift this month for the month of may i have a free um, card kit for you as an additional thank you card as an additional sorry thank you gift and the um the kit the card kit is for orders of any size i'll show you actually where have i put them um da, 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 i had them out last night hang on a sec oh here they are so the card kit will be to create this beautiful card um, using those um, beautiful beautiful new in colors so we've got pebbled path and wild wheat moody mauve boho blue and copper clay and and the flowers here are from the sweet as a daisy um, sweet as a daisy hang on a minute let me go to my contents page um, Fresh as a daisy, that's the one, the fresh as a daisy sweet. Um, so yeah, so you'll get a kit to create this card. You'll just do your own stamping, but everything else will be in the kit for you to create this card. So that is my free gift. Um, that is an extra free gift for the month of May. All right, so today we are going to be using the Zoo Crew Sweet Collection. So this is such an adorable, adorable suite. If you haven't seen this already, oh my goodness, you have to check it out. It is super, super cute. So in the suite is um, a stamp set. So you can see the stamp set here with all the cute little critters. We've got a die set. Okay, now remember if any, if these, these are bundled, these ones. So whenever you purchase um, products that are bundled, so stamps and dies or stamps and punches, if it shows that they are a bundle, um, you'll save 10% if you purchase them together as a bundle. And there is one code for that, which you'll find where they are listed as a bundle. There's also a bundle section in the back of the catalog. Um, in fact, where is that? Let me find the pages that that is on so I can tell you if you're looking for them. All right, so the punch bundles start on page 146 and then um for the die bundles the stamp and die bundles they start on page 154 so you'll find this one um zoo crew this is in alphabetical order so zoo crew is going to be towards the end there it is there yeah okay so there you see a bundle you can see the dies up a little bit closer there too on that that view that's on page 160 but it is a super super cute suite now the um it also comes with ribbon um and the ribbon comes in a combo pack of um two different ribbons you've got petal pink and lemon lime twist um and then you've got the gorgeous designer series paper now as, as i mentioned at the beginning i don't have a full pack left of the designer series paper and i'm just using up my scraps from designing the class um, but you get a full pack of designer series paper um, and the designer series paper is um, 12 by 12 inches um, there are six different themes in the paper with those cute little animals. You've got music theme, you've got a party theme, dancing, um, at home, different things at, around the home like cooking and knitting and arts, yoga, all that sort of thing. Then there is um, an outdoors paper, so like hiking, camping, um, campfire, that sort of thing. And then you've got one with um different modes of transport like bikes and scooters and roller skates and things like that so really really fun on the backs of those papers are black and white colored um designs that you can then add color to if you'd like to some of the images um, on the designer series paper have a little bit of color but then you can so you can leave them as they are or you can um, add color to them so if i hold that up a little bit closer to the camera can you see that gorgeous paper? 
It is so, so cute. And the black and white designs are awesome too. Now, all of those products are available individually or you can order them together as a, a, an entire suite collection. Um, and if you want the entire suite, you've got a code over here. Now, just to let you know, the price in the catalog here in Australia um, is um, incorrectly printed. It says that the entire suite is 138. In fact, it's $134.50. Okay, so just let you know that, that it is a misprint in the catalog. So it's a little bit less than what it says in the catalog. Okay. All right, so lots of great samples there as well using this suite. But um, yeah, I just want to show you where you can find the products. So that is on pages 46 and 47 of the catalogue. Okay. So this is the card that I created on Monday, on my Monday um, live creative time. In case you missed it, I created this cute little one with the little goat. The goat I fussy cut from the designer series paper. Um, and yeah, just added that. This is some of the designer series paper as well. And these flowers in the background, they're actually from the dies. And I've just die cut those and I've just done tone on tone. I've just adhered them to the white cardstock and then just trimmed um, the edges. And it sort of gives you the effect of um, embossing. Makes it look like they're, they're actually embossed on the cardstock, but they're not. So yeah, so there you go. All right, so that's the one I made on Monday. So if you want to go back and look at my Monday um, video, I gave you a full tu tutorial of how to create that card. So you can always go back and have a look. Now, I just noticed that my camera is a little bit crooked. So I'm going to straighten that up because it's, it is very annoying when it's crooked. There we go. That's a bit better now. Okay. Um, oh, hi, Enika. How are you? All the way from the Netherlands. That is fantastic to see you. Lovely to have you with us. All right. Okay. So, um, so again, this is my class that is coming up, the Zoo Crew card class. So, um, check that one out. I put the link here in the comments and I'll add the link to the description of the video when I finish filming this video. Um, so that you can go and check that out and check what is included and there's two different options there one that includes the products for the class and one that is um, tutorial only all right um, honeybee says i'm waiting for my hubby to get home from work oh he's a first responder ah what an amazing job wow all right so okay so let me show you the products up close. Here is the stamp set and the dies. I'll take the dies out of the packet so that you can see. These ones I actually really need to put onto some of my magnet sheets because um, they have been getting a lot of use and they're starting to fall off the, the, uh, the sticky is becoming not so sticky anymore because I've had them on and off so many times. Um, so in the stamp set we've got the cute little animals some fun sentiments for lots of different occasions we've got a couple of background stamps or you could use them as background or however you like but we've got some musical notes and some confetti as well um well, we're going to be using the little crocodile today because i think he is super cute um and he looks like he's taking flowers to a friend or perhaps to mum on mother's day um yeah, so I just I just love that one. I think it's super cute. So these are the red rubber cling stamps and you'll see I haven't put all of my stickers on mine yet. Um, but they are the stamps. So I've taken out the ones that we're going to be using today. Now as for the dies, we have got dies that cut out everyone. Let me just move that light back a little bit. We're getting a bit too much reflection. Um, we have dies that cut out each of the animals in the stamp set, as well as additional dies. So we have got um, curtains. So we've got dancing um, animals, and as well as there's additional ones in the designer series paper. So we've got curtains that we can create the stage, and this is the ruffle for the top of the curtain, or you can use it as a scallop. We've got little tie backs for the curtains as well. Um, then we've got a label die 
We've got a couple of trees in different sizes. We've got flowers here and here. Um, we've got a little table. We've got balloons. We've got clouds. We've got a little vase. Um, all different sorts of sorts of things that you can create lots of different scenes with. Now we're only using minimal amount of dyes today, but in the class we are pretty much using most of those dyes to create different scenes on the six cards in the class. Um, I think the only one we may not have used is the, the two small, uh, the small flower ones. I think they might have been just the only ones we didn't use. Um, but these ones I used on my Monday card. And these ones I thought we might try and use today. So, um, yeah, so that's the stamp set and dies. This is the ribbon. I'll show you this ribbon up close. This is really pretty ribbon. So we've got the two different types of ribbon. This one's lemon lime twist and this one is petal pink. So the lemon lime twist is very fine. And the petal pink is about six millimeters, I think. So this one... The green, the lemon lime twist is probably about three millimeters. Yeah, it's about half the thickness. So, yeah, really beautiful. And they come together in the pack. Now we're going to be using some rhinestone basic jewels as well. They're not part of the um, suite, but they are part of the class. So um, we're going to be using some of those as well. And then I've got some additional products. I'll show you those as we go along. All right. Um, the paper, so let me show you what I've got left. Basically, this is what I have got left. So I'm going to be ordering more of this paper because I love it and I'm nearly out. So I had set aside um, some of the paper for the class packs to send out and this is all I have got left. So I've got a few little bits that I've already um, fussy cut and die cut and then these basically are just the scraps. So we're working with the scraps today, but you can see some of these cute little animals and see, aren't they just so fun? And I love how you've just got little bits of color on there and that allows us to add more color if we wish to. But if you don't want to, you can use them exactly as they are. So this is the, the musical one. And this is the camping one. Whoops, we've got extra little bits everywhere. And then you've got all the black and white designs on the other side. And you'll see that I have been doing some color testing on some of these as well. So, yeah, but they do come in full 12 by 12 sheets when you receive them. For my class, we have cut them down to 6 by 12 to make it easier for mailing. But we've cut them in a way that um, you'll still get lots of great use um, from them and especially for the class as well so there you go so there's all the fun designs alrighty so let me share with you my inspiration hang on a sec I'm just going to put these back in oh I found out the other day too on Monday so I wrote myself a little note to put in my packet because there's one animal on here that I did not know what it was. It's this little one here with the stripy tail. Apparently, it's a South American coati. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. It's C-O-A-T-I. Apparently, that's what that little one is. All the other ones I knew what they were, but just not that one. So, there you go. And I had never heard of that animal before. So, that was something new to me. All right, so that's the DSP. I'll pop that one back in there too. Um, oh, I'm I'm right. Oh, awesome. Thank you, honeybees. Fantastic. Good to know. <laughs> All right, so I was thinking last night, okay, what am I going to create today? Um, because I've been so busy, I hadn't had a chance to really prepare ahead of time. So I was trying to think of what I would create and I thought, well, let me have a look and see what I've got in my... Oh, is this falling down again? I thought I'd have a look and see... I'll just adjust this. What was in my, um, my tote that I haven't used yet. So I've got an ideas tote that I use. Sorry for the, the jumpiness while I just adjusted that. And I found an old, old, old card that I had. Now, this old card... Um, this was before I was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so many, many, many years ago. 
Um, this is actually from 17 years ago and it's an anniversary card that I made for my husband way back when, um, when card making back then was a little bit simpler as well. Oh, thank you so much, honeybees. Um, yeah, so just a really basic, very nice, clean design. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if I could use that with um, the Zoo Crew today. So it made me think, well, I want to do a tag card. So I pulled out the tag dies that we have, but they were a little bit too small for what I wanted. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to create my own. And I'm going to use my um, very best trio punch. I've got my label on here, so I remember what it's called. All of my punches are labeled. Um, actually, except for my newest ones, I need to label those. Um, but I thought we would use that today to create a tag. And we'll do a cute little scene on there. So what I start, I'll show you what I started with last night. So I wanted to recreate this layout, but using the Zoo Crew um, designer series paper and I've got some additional pieces in here too um, so I'll just pop those to the side so this is kind of what I was coming up with last night I want to use the colors that are in the paper we've got really pretty colors in the paper I want to use both ribbons and this is kind of what I was coming up with last night but then I wasn't really happy with it so I don't know so what I thought we might do today is so I've got my basic layout and we're going to add a little bit of color to this DSP that belongs with the tag. So I've got some pool party cardstock. This one I have embossed this piece here and I'll, I'll show you how I did that, but I just want to show you my basic layout. So this is the basic layout that I had and nothing is stuck down yet because I was mimicking this one. And then I created my little tag and I used the um, very best trio punch to create the top of the tag and I thought I'll put this on here I've got my little squares of cardstock I created a um, sentiment label to go on there and then I've got my little squares and this was a great use of those that designer series paper that is all chopped up so this is a great use for your scraps so I've just got little two oh, I think it was two or two point five let me rem remember two and a half centimeter um, squares so for those of you in America that will be one inch one inch squares of the designer series paper and I thought well that's pretty cute and I've got the strip there too so mimicking the tag here but and this is all going to keep moving until I stick it down so don't worry about that and so I stamped one of the little um, the little crocodiles and colored that all in and I put that on there but then I'm like oh dear you lose him because of all that busy background pattern you lose it so what I did then is I pulled in my stylish shapes dies and I die cut a vellum square with the second largest um, square die and I die cut a square to overlay over the top of these to just soften them a little bit and to make our crocodile pop okay so that's what I came with and I tied these two ribbons through the loop but then but then I thought oh, I'm really not sure I don't know if I really like it I want to use more of the dies so what I thought I'd do today is create a scene tag. Now that I've got all of this um, prepared, I will put this tag together, then I'll create my scene tag, and then you can let me know which one you like best, and whichever one you like best, um, I will put on the card. Okay, how does that sound? Does that sound good? Um, because I just couldn't, I just couldn't decide and I, I really wasn't 100% happy with, with that. And I thought, oh, it's not really utilizing the dies much. And yeah, I was just a little bit indecisive about it. So we're well, quite indecisive about it, actually. <laughs> um, oh, Honeybee says she needs to make an anniversary card for hubby. Oh, it's your 24th anniversary on the 15th of this month. Oh, happy anniversary. That's amazing. Um, and Inika says, um, 
Congratulations, our 40th anniversary is on the 20th of this month. Wow, congratulations. And you still haven't yet made him a card either. Well, there you go. Oh, Inika, you love this design. Oh, thank you so much. Um, oh, fantastic. Uh, Inika says they say it's the ruby anniversary for the 40th. Oh, there you go. And you love rubies. Oh, well, I hope he's buying you rubies. <laughs> uh, oh, Honeybee says she really likes this design. Um, may have to case the layout. Oh, feel free. That's why I share so that you can, um, it can spark your creativity as well. All right, well, what I might do is I'll, I'll show you the steps to create this tag and then we might go ahead and make the um, the scene tag that I have in my mind as well. And then we can add whichever tag you like the best, okay? So, but this is my, this is my inspiration. So, alrighty, so let's get started. I'll pop that one up there. I'll keep my ribbons there to the side. All right, so what I did, I've got all of my cardstock here. Um, I've got some basic white, I've got some um, pool party, and this one this one got a bit of ink on it from something, but I thought, well, that's okay, because I'm just using strips of it, so, you know, utilise that, but just not the inky part. And then I've got some lemon lime twist, and these are the colours that are in the paper, okay? And then I've got some petal pink. And you'll notice that I've pulled out all of my little scrappy bits. Because we're just using small amounts, why not use up some of those scraps? And then I've pulled in the um, crumb cake as well, okay? So that's kind of my, my colour scheme. And I've got the white there in case I decide to go with the white. All right, so that's all there ready to go. Um, we might start off with our card base. Now I did pull in some black as well because inspired by my original card. So this is just a card front piece. Um, this one measures 10.1 uh, centimeters by 14.45 centimeters. And I'm going to put that on my card base. Now, if you are in America, um, or you're from another country overseas, just adapt to your measurements because our card bases, um, sorry, our card stock is A4 size. So this is half of an A4 size. So it measures 21 centimeters by 14.45 um, centimeters. So, oh, sorry, 14.85 centimeters. So 21 by 14.85. I've scored and folded that in half at 10.5. So yeah, if you're using letter size card stock, um, then just cut that in half and then fold that in that piece in half and then just do your measurements um, and just do your standard layer um, layer piece. So I think you have, is it a quarter or an eighth of an inch um, border usually? Whatever your standard measurement is, just do that. Okay, so then I'm going to adhere this black to the card base because this is Regardless of which tag I use, this is still going to be the same basic layout. So I'll attach that to the front because I know that that is going to be on the front. Now I've got a two millimeter border all the way around. Oops, let me get that a bit straighter. There we go. All right. And then for these pieces here, this one was, oh gosh, I can't even remember now and I didn't write it down last night. Okay, so this one is four centimetres across by 10.1. So it's going to be the same width as the black. And then what I did is I ran this through the stripes and splatters embossing folder. So I used the striped embossing folder and I won't do that again because that's pretty self-explanatory so you just so this is pool party so um, you just run that through with the embossing folder to give you that beautiful texture At, originally I just had it um, plain cardstock and it just really looked flat so I added the texture and it just really made a difference and then this little strip here this is six millimeters so it's the width basically of your tear and tape Okay, and that one is going to go down the bottom. 
All right, so we can um, adhere those now or we can wait until we're ready to do this strip. Now this strip here, again, is um, the same width as this layer here. So it is 14.45 centimeters and by three centimeters, okay? So we are going to color this one. We're gonna add a little bit of color to those flowers before adhering that to the paper. So we are using some um, Stampin' Dimensional, uh, sorry, Stampin' Blends today. Let me get that right. Stampin' Blends we're using today. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll get that ready. Um, there was one thing I was just going to say before I did that. Oh yes, what we might do before we start though is we'll start stamp our crocodile because we want this ink to dry before we start doing the coloring, all right? So I'll bring in my scrap of basic white and let me just find that. There we go. All right, so I'll bring in some basic white. We'll put all of this over to the side for the moment. We're doing things a little bit out of order today, but that's okay. All right, so Memento Tuxedo Black, and I've already got my stamp on the block. This one doesn't have the sticker on it yet. Um, as I said, I haven't finished stickering all of my stamps yet. All right, now when I use um, Tuxedo Memento Black, because it is a very firm um, felt pad, I like to rub first over my stamp and then tap. And that gives you a nice even coverage of ink. So tap, tap, tap. And then we're just gonna stamp our crocodile. So a nice firm pressure. There we go, beautiful. All right, so we'll set that aside to dry. Okay, we'll let that ink dry before we do any coloring with that. And um, I've got my grid paper here. So my small grid paper, which sadly has sold out. It's no longer available. It has retired from the previous um, annual catalog, which I'm very sad about because I loved it but we do have large grid paper and we've got the new um, in color grid paper that's available too. Um, let me see, I'll pop that stamp up there out of the way. There we go. All right, so while we're stamping, we'll also stamp this sentiment too. So this piece here is, now I trimmed this with my um, cutter last night. It's six centimeters wide by two, point three 2.3 now I don't have another one of those cut actually so we'll trim one of those to size so we'll cut that at six centimeters and then um, what did I say it was 2.3 2.3 so 2.3 is just two little lines before the two and two and a half centimeter so we'll line that up there push that up against that edge at the top there where you've got that little ledge there we go okay so we've got our little sentiment label And bring in my sentiment stamp. Rub, 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 tap, tap, tap. And we'll stamp that hopefully in the center. Now let's see how we go because it's very hard to get my head in, not to get my head in, I should say, when I'm stamping. Oop, there we go. Oh, that's not too bad. It's a little bit heavy, a little bit heavy on one side, but I think we can get away with that. All right, and um, we'll give that one a clean on our chamois. Always a good idea to clean your stamps straight away so that you don't, um, the ink doesn't stain them too, too much. Um, the red rubber is pretty good though. It doesn't really stain um, 
as much as the polymer. The polymer does stain up a little bit, but even in saying that, um, if it does, the polymer does stain, as long as you clean that surface ink off, it doesn't actually affect um, your, your um, stamps. So as so long as you clean them off. Alrighty, so we've got those layers. Okay, so we'll let those dry. And now let's color these little flowers on this, this strip here. So the colors that I'll be using for the flowers are, um, I've got the Lemon Lime Twist and the Light um, Calypso Coral. And for the centers, I'm just going to use Ivory because that's the color that I was going, that I am using for um, the bike as well. So we'll keep using the same ones. Yep. Um, Okay, Inika says, oh, Inika says we have A42 and I hate that size. Oh, you don't like using the A4 size. Usually cut it down to 29 centimetres or 28 centimetres. Um, can't measure half centimetres on your trimmer. Oh, okay. So just, um, so just, yeah, just change the the measurements to suit your um, yeah, whichever market you are in and your measurements. So if you're doing imperial, just alter the measurements to fit your, your, um, layers. Yeah. To fit your card base, basically. Yeah. Adjust your layers to fit your card base. Um, but this will just give you the layout idea. And then from there you can just adapt. So if I ever see a card that I really like that's made in imperial measurements, that's what I do. I just adjust it to my um, my size card base. All right, so we'll just do the little centers there first. I'll pop my glasses on so that I can see. We have got um, Carol here from South Texas, USA. Welcome, Carol. It's great to have you here. Thank you for joining us. All right. Oh my goodness. I have got a big smear on my glasses. I'm just popping my glasses on because I'm doing this coloring and it's very, very fine work for, well, for my eyes anyway. And I've got a big smear on my glasses. That's better. There we go. All right. Um, we'll color the little petals. Now with your stamp and write marker, uh, sorry, your stamp and blends, these are an alcohol based marker. Um, they have a beautiful, um, they blend beautifully because of the alcohol in them they, and you get a really nice smooth finish. You have two tips. So you have a brush tip, which is great for coloring um, larger sections and it's a nice soft brush. Um, you will see a thick line at that end. So you know that that's your brush tip. And then the other end and the caps are tight because um, we don't want that alcohol to evaporate. Then on the other end, you've got this nice fine bullet tip. And that's great for coloring um, smaller sections. So we're going to use the bullet tip for the flowers. And because the petals are very small, you basically just need to dab the color rather than, um, you know, do use brush strokes or anything like that. We're just going to dab the color on there. And that will give us a nice color. Uh, so this is the light Calypso. I was just double checking which one I was using. That's the light Calypso. So the great thing about this designer series paper with the black and white designs is you can leave it black and white or you can add color. I just wanted to add a pop of color to the front of the card. Now you might be wondering why I'm using Calypso and not Petal Pink because Petal Pink is in the card stock. Um, I just wanted to add a little bit more of a pop of colour to this paper. So I am, um, I will be using the Petal Pink on the tag but I just thought if I used Petal Pink for this part too, it might be all a bit too much. So I thought I'll just go a little bit darker in tone to the um, Calypso Coral. I love Calypso Coral. 
It's a really pretty color. Oops, it's all right. If you go out of the lines, it's okay. Just slipped a little bit there. So does anybody else have the Zoo Crew Switch? Have you been playing with it? Let me know in the comments. Okay, I've been having so much fun. I think this is, I also have a card um, on my, um, so, sorry, let me start that again. So I also have a an exclusive tutorial available for those who subscribe to my newsletter. So if you're not yet subscribed to my newsletter, um, feel free to subscribe to my newsletter. I send out a newsletter every week um, with creative inspiration, um, the latest Stampin' Up! news and all different sorts of things. And I have an exclusive tutorial that is sent out to people who subscribe to my newsletter and I've just created a new one for this new catalogue. Um, so my current subscribers, they will get a copy of that this week. That'll be sent out to them. And anybody who is subscribing from now on will get that, um, that new tutorial bundle. And um, I have actually used this suite in that tutorial as well this time. So oh, not for both, not for all of the projects. There's three projects in that tutorial, but there is um, one, one of them which uses this suite of products. And it's a super cute card. So I've actually designed and created quite a few projects between my class, my Facebook lives and the tutorial. Been using this suite a lot. All right, let's add a pop of green with these leaves. So this is the Lemon Lime Twist and I'm so happy that this colour has returned. So Lemon Lime Twist was a, an in colour a few years ago and I was so sad when it retired. So I'm super happy to have it back again because it is a great, it's a lovely green colour. And it is actually quite different to Parakeet Party, believe it or not. When you look at them each individually you think oh yeah they're quite similar when you put them together they're very very different one of them's more um brownie undertone the other one's much more yellow undertone or not yellow um more like a more vibrant sort of greeny color um oh you have it inika you have this sweet fantastic and you love it as well yeah it's so fun isn't it Honeybee says, I purchased everything except for the dyes. Now I'm regretting my decision. Yeah, oh, you definitely need those dyes. They are gorgeous. All right, so there we go. So there we've got our DSP ready to go. So we can um, adhere those layers together now on our card. Let's just move our... Oh, one thing I didn't mention is when you are coloring with the um, Stampin' Blends, and a lot of you probably already know this, but anyone who might be new to crafting and might not know, there's the um, Stampin' Blends, because they are alcohol-based, they have a really good absorption and they do bleed through your paper or cardstock. So it's really important to have um, some paper or something like that underneath you when you're coloring to protect your work surface. Okay, here we go. Right, we are ready to put these layers on now. Okay, so let's bring in our glue. And I'm going to add my um, pool party layer first to the top. This is the one I already spoke about. And created ahead of time. So I'm gonna put that down around about here with a, a bit of a, a black border there at the top. Okay, and then we'll do our little skinny strip at the bottom of Pool Party. There we go. And we'll put that one down about here. We'll get that one lined up first and then we'll add our designer series paper. That looks pretty good. Okay, and then we'll add our designer series paper at the bottom. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm just going to leave a little gap in between the designer series paper and the pool party strip. So you can see a little bit of the, the black um, cardstock. Sorry, I'll move that up a little bit. I just realized I was working off camera. The camera's up a little bit higher to, um, I like set up a little bit higher on the desk to where I normally have it for my Facebook Lives because it looks different for both. So there we go. So that's the that's the basis of the um, the layout. There's our original card that we're copying. Okay, so we've sort of got everything lined up similarly to the, the first one with our layers there. And now we need to create our tag. So we'll just let that sit and dry. Okay, for our tag, we are going to use some crumb cake cardstock. And we're going to cut a label. We're going to create a label. So we're going to have the label. Um, let me just see. Yeah. So we're going to have the label 12 centimeters long. So that is, um, it's about uh, four and three, three quarter inches. And then six centimeters wide. Okay, so it's half as wide as it is long. Okay, so that's, yep, that's that. So six by 12. Now what I want to do is I want to put a little mark in here. I just want to score a little mark in here halfway in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to go to my three centimeter mark and I'm just going to put a little a little notch there with my scoring blade okay just so I know where the center is there because I'm going to use that to line up um, my punch all right so we'll create the top of the tag first of all I'm going to create the notch for the the ribbon and we're going to use the little notch here on the top of the punch Okay, it's, I know it's really hard to see on camera because of the lights reflecting, um, but there is a notch there on the, this is the very best trio punch if you missed me showing that at the beginning. Okay, so we'll pop that down. Now on this one, I'll just show you, there's a little, um, a little notch sort of, or a little mark there in the actual punch, and that helps you to line up the center of your cardstock. Okay, which is why... I, am, I um, use the scoring blade just to put that little notch here. So I'm going to line that up with the notch on my punch and feed that all the way in. You've got these little, little, well, little lugs, I'm calling them, on the sides of the punch which hold your cardstock. And let me just double check that I fed that in straight. Okay, line that up straight and then just push straight down in the middle of your punch. Okay. And then that gives you your little hole for your ribbon. Okay, from there, you can choose which of the um, edges that you want to use. So if you want to use um, the fancy edges, like I did on this one, or you just want to have cut off edges, like I did on this one, which this one I did by hand, because I made this many, many years ago before we had all these fancy punches. Um, so I actually did that with a pencil and a ruler and, yeah, just trimmed it with my snips. Um, but we're going to use the punch. So we will, um, what I actually wanted to do though, and I did keep out, now let me see, where did I put them? Um, not there. I've got here my little um, baggie somewhere with all my extra little pieces in. Where did that go? I've probably dumped everything on top of it now. Uh, where did I put that? Oh, is that it there? No, that's not it there. Here it is. Okay, so when I punched the corners last night, I thought, oh, that's not the orientation that I wanted those. So I kept the little notches that I cut out. These are the little notches that I cut out because from there you can determine, you can lay that on your project and determine which way you want your little notches cut. Okay, so you can either do it that way or you can turn it up the other way and have it cut out 
that way, which I think is the way that I had it last night. No, that way, that way, that way, that's the way, <laughs> something like that. But anyway, but I thought I would do it the opposite way, this way, this way, that's the one, that way. I thought I might try it that way. No, that's the way I did it last night. So it must be the opposite. One of these ways, that way. Yeah, that way. I thought I'd try it that way today. So that means if I want it that way, that means I have to put my paper in that way. Okay, so that little extra piece that cuts out that's what I use to work out which way to do this notch because this one, depending on which way you put it in and which side you feed into the punch will determine which way it notches the, um, yeah, that design. So I'm going to go that way. So I'm putting it in that way. And let's see if that's, yeah, that's the way I wanted it. And then to do the other one opposite, what we're going to do is we're going to flip the cardstock over and put it back in the same way, making sure that we line up with those little notches there. There we go, yeah. So I'll show you the difference between the two tags. So keep these little bits because you can use them as a measure to work out on the corners of your cardstock which way you want to um, cut that little detail. Does that make sense? It sounds really confusing. I don't think I explained that very well. <laughs> um, but hopefully by my demonstration, it kind of helped you to understand what I was talking about. So let me show you the difference between the two tags. So it's using that same corner, that same little um, corner punch. And see how this one You've got the scoop there, but here you've got the scoop up the top. See how they look a little bit different? This is this is actually the, the effect that I wanted. But this is the one I did last night, and then I'm like, oh, that's not exactly how I wanted it. See how you can just get two different looks there using the same punch? So there you go. Um, Enika says, stamp sets with dies are my favourite. I can... Um, I can fussy cut, but because of a kind of rheumatism, it hurts. Oh, yes, yeah. And I need to pause quite often, yeah. If you've got any sort of arthritis or rheumatism or anything in your hands, it can be quite painful to do fine work, yeah. Um, Honeybee says, can you get a scrap and show us the other way it would punch out? Oh, well, there you go. So we've got the two different ways there. Oh, did you mean this one here? I can show you that one too. Um, I do have a scrap here. So this one here, it just basically takes the corner off it. So I'll pop that in there like that. And that's the that's the other one. It just, yeah, it just takes the corner off like that. But these ones, so we've got uh, that one, no, that way, from there. And this one goes that way. So there's the three different ways that you can do your corners. Okay. So, <laughs> oh yeah, it was this one you were talking about, um, honeybees? Yeah, there you go. So there, that's how to explain it. So it just depends on which way you feed your, when you're doing the fancy corner, it depends if you feed your cardstock in from the left side or the right side as to which way it will punch. So if you just practice on some scrap and then use your little piece there to work out how, which way you want it to go, and then I kind of use that to line up on here and that helps me to work out which way I need to feed my cardstock in. But just remember if you want the opposite side to mirror that side, you then have to flip your piece over. So put it in the first time and then flip your cardstock over and then put it in the opposite side or put the opposite side in the punch. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let me have a little sip of water. I just realized I haven't actually had a drink this morning and I was wondering why I was starting to get a little bit thirsty. <laughs> 
All right, so there we go. So we've got the three tags. I'm going to go with this one because I like this, the shape of this one the best. And we'll keep these little pieces just to use as our little template. Okay. Now, with these, I'm not going to cut these again because I've already got them. So we don't really need to cut them again. This piece is the same width as this piece. Okay, so it's six millimeters. Okay, now six millimeters, I'm not, I don't know what that is in inches. I don't work in inches. So let's see. It's um, a quarter of an inch. Yeah, it's a quarter of an inch. Oh, actually, is that a quarter? Yes. So that's a half. That's a quarter. Yes, so it's a quarter of an inch wide. So very, very narrow. So that's going to go along the bottom of our tag. Now, each of these little squares, I use, I just cut these from the scraps that I had of my designer series paper. And each one of these is two and a half centimetres or one inch square. Okay. So... I'll kick my I'm gonna kick my slippers off I've got my slippers and I've got socks on it's very cold here at the moment but uh it's warming up in here in the in the craft room okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere this little strip first to the bottom of the tag Oop, I better put the glue on the right side thankfully the glue wasn't running yet because I was about to glue the wrong side of that little strip there we go. So we'll add that to our tag. So it's going to go down about here. There we go. Now I've got my sentiment label as well. So I'm going to add my sentiment label to the top of the tag. I'm going to add that near the top there and then these little pieces I'm going to line them up in the middle so we want the um, I think I had it that way we want the two um, black backgrounds to be opposite diagonally opposite and then the two white backgrounds opposite Okay, so we'll try and get them sort of in the middle. I'm going to line them up before I stick them down so that I can get them sort of centered. I think about there is good. So we'll do this one first. And we'll just line them up. Try and get them, we sort of want to have them so that we've got around about the same amount of distance um, between each of the pieces and having them sort of centred at the same time. So it can be a little bit of fiddling just to get that. Um, um, oh, Inika says, I'm sorry, but I'm getting tired, going to try and go to bed. Oh, it's 4.10am there. Oh my goodness. Yes, Inika, go to bed. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Mandy. Have a great day, night, afternoon. Oh, thank you, Enika. I hope you have a beautiful sleep. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so we'll pop this one down here. Okay, and then this one. So you can do this design with any designer series paper and cardstock. Um, and it is, as I said before, it's a great way of using up your scraps. So, you know, we get all these little scrappy bits and a lot of them end up in the bin. But if you hang on to them, now do we want to go up and down or side to side? I think I actually prefer it up and down. I think I'll go up and down. Um, yeah, so keep your little scraps because you can use them. And oftentimes, too, with our scraps, especially if they're longer strips of scrap, we can use them on the inside of our card, of course, too, to decorate the inside of our card. There we go. Okay. So that's the basis of our tag. Now, 
because that is so bold and we've got our little crocodile we haven't actually colored our crocodile yet but we're going to attach a piece of vellum but before i attach the vellum i want to um i want to see where my crocodile is going to be sitting first so that where i put my adhesive will be covered up by the crocodile because otherwise we'll be able to see that adhesive through that vellum so the vellum um, as i mentioned before i used the um the second largest square die from the stylish shapes die okay and i just cut a um, this was actually just a scrap of vellum that i had and the die fit perfectly so i just cut that out of the, the scrap of vellum that i had all right so we'll color our little um crocodile and i've got all my colors here will bring in a couple of extra colors so the colors that we used before for the designer series paper um, so we've got the um, the light uh, calypso coral we've got the ivory we've got the light and the dark lemon lime twist then I'm bringing in light lost lagoon and the dark smoky slate okay and we'll color our little crocodile so I'm going to use the dark lemon lime twist first and I'm going to just color his little spines there we go and then I'm going to um, actually swap over to the brush tip And for the brush tip, I'm just going to do a layer of dark along his back there. And we'll go up to do his eyes. Uh, we're going to do his belly. And his little legs, but not his, not his claws. There we go. And we'll just go a little bit with a little bit of dark along here. Okay, and then with our light, our light lemon lime twist, we're going to blend that down. So I like to color with a circular motion when I'm using my brush tip and when I'm blending light and dark together. Now with the lemon lime twist, um, there's not as much difference between the light and the dark as with some of our other colors. I noticed when I was using this last night. Um, yeah, it's not some of the other colors, there's a real big difference between the two colors, like the light and the dark, but not as much with this one. Let's just go around his little teeth. We'll try and keep his teeth white. There we go. So you can just add a little bit more of the light down on his tail. Oh, I just remembered I don't have my grid paper under there. Hopefully that didn't go through to my desk. So just add some more there and that will just give a little bit more depth of color along his back. So the more layers you add, um, the darker it will become. And I'll leave him with a little bit of light there on his um on his side because with a bit, little bit of light reflecting there off off his body okay um just blend this a little bit better here around his jaw there we go okay so that's as easy as that is um the little flowers will color them the same as on the designer series paper so we'll use ivory for in the center of the flowers and we're actually using ivory as well for the basket so using the bullet tip because they're just finer little areas to color the flowers will be the light calypso coral again just the same as what we had on the dsp and again just dabbing that color on just with a, using a light hand not going too heavy so that with the Stampin Blends, um, it's a great idea when you're colouring with Stampin Blends to just try and colour 
um, just inside the lines. If you go right to the line, the color keeps absorbing into the cardstock and it can actually bleed out of the, the lined image. So just go easy with your, um, with your Stampin' Blends. There we go. Great, all right. Now for the bike, I'm using the Lost Lagoon and this is the light. And we're going to color the bike frame in the Lost Lagoon. Let's turn that around a little bit, including the seat. Oh, I forgot to color his claws as well, I just realized. I'll do those in the ivory. There we go, so it's a little bike frame. Oh, I realized too, I missed one of his little arms. Come back in with that. There we go. Um, I'll do his nails with the ivory. We might do his teeth with the ivory too. Just a tiny little dab there. Okay. And then the wheels we're going to do with that dark smoky slate. So I found that we, we do have black in the, um, the, the Stampin' Blends, but I found that that was a little bit too heavy um, for the wheels. So I found that the dark smoky slate was the better color for the wheels. With the, the black, you sort of lose, lost the, um, the stamped image. It was just a little bit too heavy. There we go. So there's our little crocodile all done and dusted and that's all our colouring done. All right, so we'll bring in the die for him from our die sheet. There it is there. Okay. And we'll bring in our mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. There we go. Okay, who loves their mini stamp and cut their boss machine? Do you love yours? I'm just gonna trim my cardstock here so that I can save that piece of cardstock for another project. I'll just do that off camera for a moment. So I've just, just chopped that down a bit. And also too, that'll fit through the machine a little bit easier. And I'll grab some washi tape to add on there. It's got some there on from my, um, I keep it stored on my, my little strips I use over and over until they totally fall apart of washi tape. And um, I just keep them stored on my large machine. And then I can just grab them whenever I need them. All right, so we'll just hold that down in place there like so. Actually, I might just need, need to move that over a little bit. Oops. That's better. A better positioning. Um, Honeybee says, I love the mini. It stays on my desk all the time. Oh, fantastic. They're so great for on your desk, aren't they? Because they are so um, compact and they, you know, they just don't take up much space. Oh, I don't have my plates. Under. So when you are putting your plates on your mini, it's a good idea to stagger them. So this is the base plate. And then the next plate, if you just have that sitting back a little bit and then the top plate, you can line up. So then that way, um, there's not too much bulk at the very end of the, the, um, the plates, so the rollers can uh, more easily grab onto those plates as they feed through. There we go. That's better. Yeah. Oh, Carol says me. She loves her mini as well. Fantastic. They're a great little machine, aren't they? I like to call mine the mighty mini. There we go. So there's our cute little crocodile. How adorable is that? So cute. All right. All right, we'll just pop the, um, the die back 
on our die sheet so that I don't lose it. Which way did I have that on there? I've really got to put these ones on magnetic sheets. I'm surprised that I haven't done it before now. I surprised myself. <laughs> oh, now I can't get him back on there. There we go. All right. Okay, so there we've got our little crocodile ready to go. All right, so now what I need to work out is where on here is my crocodile going to sit? Um, and in fact, what I want to do is with my tag, um, actually, you know what, let's put the ribbon on first. So what I'm gonna do with my ribbon is I'm gonna use both ribbons. So I'm gonna layer them because I love them both together. And then we're going to fold that in half. I will trim these two. I'm going to fold them in half. We'll feed them through that notch in the top. And they fit through beautifully through that notch. And then we just thread them back through themselves like that. And then just adjust, pull them through like that. Just adjust them. And then we've got all those fun colors at the top of the tag and we will trim those when we get everything else um, sorted. So then we're gonna have the tag at an angle like that. And then the crocodile is actually going to be straight so I think what we'll do um, is I'm going to mark where this is going to go so that I know where to put my adhesive behind my crocodile. So I'm just going to put a little pencil mark just underneath where the crocodile is going to go. So I'm just putting a little pencil mark on my vellum just underneath there just on the inside of where that crocodile is so that I can know where I can safely put my adhesive. Okay, so there I've got my pencil marks there. So I'm gonna turn this over. I like to use a dry adhesive. Actually, I'll use my tear and tape. I like to use a dry adhesive on my vellum. I find that the liquid glue makes it curl up a little bit. Um, Oh, you call yours the mini, the mini baby boss. Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll just put this. Oh, hang on a minute. I've got hair on there. There we go. Uh, yeah, so what I was saying is I find that the, um, the liquid glue tends to make the vellum curl a little bit. So I like to use a dry adhesive. A little bit there too and then I'll just test that I'll turn that over just to make sure that that is going to be covered up yeah I think that should be good actually good okay so then now we can put that onto we'll put the vellum onto our tag Um, over those squares of DSP. There we go. And if you are worried about that pencil mark, those pencil marks showing, you can just rub them back off. Again, that was just really to, and actually with that designer series paper on there, it does help to sort of mask that um, adhesive a little bit more too. Oh, I just caught my finger on that vellum. Oh dear. Okay. All right, so then I'm gonna put the tag on there and I want to mount that tag up and I want to mount up my um, little crocodile as well. So, whoopsie, I'll get some Stampin' Dimensionals. So I've got my minis and I've got my regulars. I'll use my Take Your Pick tool to pick those up. I'll do the, um, the tag first. Let's go around this way. 
I'll grab these and we do need to still trim that ribbon off as well. We'll come back to that. Put lots of lots of dimensionals to make sure that that's nice and sturdy and then we'll remove the backings. So if you're not familiar with the Stampin' Up dimensionals, they are double-sided adhesive foam um, and they're cut in little hexagons, which makes it really easy to use them. We also do have them in the minis, which I've got here as well. I'm gonna use the minis on the um, back of the crocodile. And there's also they also come in the, um, the sheets also. So if you like to trim your own to your own size, then you can use the um, the foam adhesive sheets. There we go. All right, and we'll use some minis. And then we've also got the strips as well. The strips are great for shaker cards or for borders, um, things like that. But the strips are a little bit higher in dimension to the rest of the dimensionals. Whereas all the other ones are all the same um, depth or width, not width, width, depth, height, the same height, let's say that. All right, there we go. So we've got lots of nice dimensionals on there. I'll just remove those paper backings. And the, um, the sheets, the foam adhesive sheets are actually great for the alphabet dies too um, or anything like that that you want to run through the um, stamp and cut and emboss machine with the with the um, the foam adhesive sheets with them now because i've got this straight edge here that is a great um sort of level or, well, straight edge, I guess you'd say, um, to line up the bike because I want him going straight. Even though the tag's at an angle, I want him going straight. So you can line it up sort of with that, with that straight edge there. There we go. And then you can trim your ribbons to the length that you want and the angles that you want them to be at. So let's see. Um, we'll go that way. I might cut them a little bit, a little bit shorter, like so. There we go. So there's that one. Okay. So I know I said I was going to decide on. I was going to let you decide on which tag to put on the card because I was going to create a second one, um, but. We can still we can still do the second tag as well. Um, yeah, I totally forgot until just now that I said that I was going to let you decide which tag I put on the card. Um, but anyway, but that's that's sort of in keeping with the original design, that one there. So we can something is going on over here. What is happening? Let's just refresh that page because I've lost the video over there. There we go. Oh, lovely card. Thank you so much, honeybees. And I just realized the time. I have already taken um, an hour and a half to do that, actually. So um, I'm wondering if I still do the other tag that I had in mind. It might take me a little bit longer to do the other one. Um, but my, my idea was, what is the length of that one? That's too short. My idea was, um, well, I'll see if I can see how quickly I can do so what I might do is I just might create the other tag but I won't do the whole card and then I can show you the two if you have to go um, that's okay if you want to come back and watch the replay of the other tag then you're welcome to do that um, yeah because I have already kept you for quite a while so six centimeters by 12 centimeters There we go. Oh, you love it, Carol. Oh, thank you. When I was creating it last night, I was just so unsure. I guess it's probably, I think too, with the colors here on the designer series paper, it has made a big difference. But last night I was so indecisive about this card and I just sort of thought, oh, I don't really know if I like it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's actually turned out not too bad. 
not too bad. But I did want to play with the other tag idea that I had too. Um, so I'll bring in my grid paper and I will do the tag ends. Now, which way was it again that I wanted it? Let's use, whoops, knocking my, my iPad there. Um, I wanted it so that it's scooped that way. No, hang on, let me get that way there like that. Like that, like that. Okay, so that goes in that way. And then I'm gonna flip my card over and put it back in and just press down in the middle. Because you, you're cutting on this corner, you kind of want to press on the corner, um, but it's, it actually doesn't cut well that way. So just press straight down. There we go. So now we've got our tag topped the same way as that one, which is what I wanted. And then I wanted to create a scene on this one. So I have got some inks here. I've got some pool party and some lemon lime twist. And I'll bring in my blending brushes. So I've got, can't use pool party with that one, I think. Oh no, I'll use the blue one, this one here. And I just want to double check this color before I go ahead with that. Put that over there and that over there. Just get myself organized here. So I'll just check. Um, okay, so instead of the pool party, I might actually use balmy blue. The pool party is a little bit more sort of greeny like this this sort of color it's a little bit a little bit greeny for the sky so i might change to balmy blue i usually do use balmy blue when i'm doing the sky just clean that brush off that's better okay so we'll pick up a bit of that balmy blue ink and we're just going to add some layers of ink to this tag. I'm going to create some sky and some grass. Who loves their blending brushes? Oh my goodness. I love playing with my blending brushes. So I want to create a little scene on this tag. And I'm going to use some of the dies um, to help me create that scene. Now, when you're using your blending brushes, the more layers you lay down, the darker it will become. So it depends on how, how heavy you want your color as to how many layers you'll add. Okay, so that's, I think that's pretty good for the blue. We can always come back in with a little bit more if we feel we need to. And then we're going to use some lemon lime twist for the um, grass, for the ground. So let me grab a green, a green brush. Add some of that lemon lime twist. The lemon lime twist is a lovely vibrant green. So that goes on much heavier than the balmy blue. The balmy blue is a much softer green. And then we're going to sort of blend the two colors together, the blue and the green. I want nice bright grass here on the tag. Now I've got that other... Um, I've got that other, there he is. I've got that other one that we had before. So, yeah, so that'll be good. There we go. All right. 
might need a little bit heavier with the blue. So we might add a little bit more of the sky. Ah, oh, yes, Carol says, easiest way to add colour. Yes. I love the blending brushes. They're so much fun, aren't they? So I like to use a circular motion to get a nice smooth finish with the, um, the colour, with the blending brushes. And you'll notice that I start my circular motions just off the paper when I start and that is and I and I dab off some of the color first so that I don't get any heavy blobs of color there we go all right awesome okay so I'll put that over back over that side and put the brush away okay so pop that one over there so we've got our tag. Okay, so what I want to do is create a little um, scene. I'm gonna create a scene. So I want some clouds and I didn't get my, still didn't get this stuck on the right way. Oh, there we go, it fits on there like that. So we've got a couple of little clouds. Um, do we have two clouds or one cloud? One cloud, I think. So we use the cloud and the trees. We've got a couple of little trees there. So there's one and two. Then we have these little flowers, these little teeny tiny flowers. Um, and yeah, I think they're the ones that I wanted to use. So we might cut some of those on our mini. So I've got some scraps here of the green and I've got some scraps of the white that I had left over from um, creating the tag. So we'll go ahead and we'll cut some of those with our mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. Um, Honeybees says, take an ink pen and draw around your dies. You'll always know where to put them back. Oh, yes, thank you for that tip, Honeybees. Yes, when I put them on my magnet sheets, I actually do that. Um, I use a uh, fine tip Sharpie. I usually have it here with me. Yeah, I use fine tip Sharpie. Um, this one is really great for drawing around the dies. Most often I don't leave my dies on the cardboard sheets that they come in. I usually move them over to some magnet sheets and I put the magnet sheets inside my die packet. Um, but that is a great tip. Thank you. I should have thought to, um, to mention that one to everybody. There we go. All right, so we're going to... Do one of the clouds and then we'll do some trees. So we'll do a couple of trees. So we'll just trim our cardstock. And then for the flowers, we might do some of those petal pink flowers. So let's see if I've got some scraps. I've got some scraps here of the petal pink. We could do the tulips in different colours, couldn't we? So pop those all on there. Let's make sure those dies aren't touching because if they're touching, it makes it very hard for, um, for the machine to feed them through the rollers. So just to have a little bit of space in between each of the dies. There we go. All right, and then we'll pop... one on top and we'll take them through our little mini um oh you're thrilled that lemon lime twist is back carolyn yes me too i love lemon lime twist such a beautiful vibrant color isn't it all right so we've got a couple of trees and we've got little tiny tulips that one didn't come out if i drop that is that going to come out nope i'm going to need to poke it out with my Take your pick tool. Oop, we've got a few of those. They're so teeny tiny. 
All right, and let's do some more. We'll do a couple more trees. I'll just put them back down on, I'll keep them stuck together with the washi. Oops. And just trim that excess cardstock. I like to just trim my cardstock around the dies so that I'm not um, putting a lot of cardstock through the machine at one time because then otherwise, um, okay, oh, there it is. Oh, that little die is hard to um, see. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a bit of washi on that so that I can find it again because I nearly didn't find it then. <laughs> um, yeah, because if you've got cut up plates like I have and you're running them through with your cardstock, it can actually dent um, the rest of the cardstock and then you won't have it, it'll be damaged to use it for anything else. So that's why I like to trim my cardstock around my dies, just so that I'm not wasting additional cardstock. All right, so we'll run those through again. Another two trees actually. Poke that one out through the little release hole. So all of your dies have little release holes in the back of them that you can just pop your um, die cut images out through those little release holes. This one will have to remove the washi tape to be able to get to those little holes. There we go, it's tiny, tiny little tulips. Put that one right there so I don't lose it. And another little cloud. And we might need a third cloud, I think. Um, probably gonna get away with three trees, I'm thinking. But we'll do one more cloud. And the tulips, I'm not sure how many tulips we're going to need. So we're putting another lot through, so let's let's just do another whole lot of everything. And then we'll be sure that we have enough. We'll do some more trees as well. There we go. We'll do another another lot of all of those. And we'll pop them through. Okay. some reason I keep losing my feed on my um on my computer but it's still up on my iPad which is strange because usually I lose it on my iPad and it stays up on my computer so we're back to front today and that's okay I can still see comments on my iPad so it's all good all right so we've got our three little clouds so we're going to use these to create a little scene on our tag this time so this will be really cute so it'll be a little mini scene on our tag okay there's our trees oops that bit of washi tapes nearly had it okay all righty so we'll put our extra little bits of cardstock over to the side. My scallop has come off my die sheet again. So I'll put that one back on. Let me just move these out of the way. Oops, sorry. I keep bumping my light stand every time I put my my um my stamp and cut and emboss machine away. Okay. So we'll just attach this one back onto there. The long skinny ones always have trouble staying on. That's why I like to move um, my dies onto magnet sheets because um, then they stay put and they don't fall off everywhere. Put the little tulips down there. Oops, that one's not on properly. 
There we go. Okay. Right. So now we've got all of our little pieces. So let's create our little scene here. Now, another idea that I had was to tear some of the, the green cardstock and to make a little bit of grass. So let's bring in, I've got some more scrap here. So I might just tear, just tear a little bit of this. This is the lemon lime twist. To just make a little bit of rustic grass along the bottom and I can trim that off. Well, I know that that's six centimeters actually, so I could, I could trim that at six centimetres. So let's measure that on there, on my trimmer. There we go. So it's a little bit of grass. We might do another one as well. Actually, I've already got that torn edge there. So let, let's utilise that and I'll just trim that strip. And then we'll trim that down to six. Oops, need to go up that way. You need to need to have a straight edge along the trimmer when you're trimming. There we go. So we've got a couple of little strips there. And what I'm going to do is I have got my lemon lime twist dauber here with my ink, and I'm going to dauber along, dauber some ink along those torn edges to just highlight them a little bit. Just gives them a little bit more depth of colour. And that will look like grass. And he can be riding his bike through the, through the park. There we go. In fact, let's do all of the trees as well. Let's add some ink to the trees. Give them a little bit more colour. I love using the um, sponging ink technique with my daubers. It is my favourite technique and I use this technique on a lot of my cards, especially on sentiment labels. I love doing this on sentiment labels. It just adds a little bit of interest to your um, to your project. There we go. I think we'll probably only use three trees, but I might just, while well, I've got the ink out, I might just quickly do the other trees just in case I end up adding some additional trees. See the difference? Like, look at the difference between the trees that are inked and the trees that are not inked. Can you see the difference there? It does make quite a bit of difference. Um, you're, you find, oh, um, Carolyn says, do you find that your cutting plates warp with the smaller die cutting machine? Um, Depending on the amount of use, my all of my plates on all of my machines do end up warping, um, regardless of the size of the machine. So my large stamp and cut and emboss machine, as well as my mini, um, they do warp over time, depending on how much you're using them. I use mine a lot because I'm prepping for classes um, and things like that. Um, but if you, you move your dies around on your plates and use the different areas of the plates and then flip your plates over each time or each other time that you're using them, um, then they, they warp a lot less quickly. But they are a um, consumable product, which means that they are um, this kind of the way that they are designed, they, they will wear over time. Um, and yeah, so they just, they will just need to be replaced at some point in time. 
Um, but yeah, it just depends on how much you use them as to how quickly they sort of warp. All right, so just slipping these in. Just want to see how I like this best. Yeah, I like I like it like that, I think. And then he can be riding his bike. Yeah, like that. Okay, that's cool. And then we've got the trees. And then we've got the clouds as well. I'm just wondering with the clouds, if we put a little bit of smoky slate around the edges of those, I'll have to grab my smoky slate dauber. There we go. No, it's basic grey. Smoky slate. That's the one. I have these little cases that I bought online. Um, Stampin' Up! doesn't sell these, but... Um, yeah, they're really, really great for storing your daubers. And I like to have a dauber for each colour of my inks because I use them a lot. <laughs> Just going to put a little bit of smoky slate around the edges of my clouds. Again, just to add a little bit of interest to them. So they're looking more a little bit like stormy, stormy sort of clouds, but not too heavy. Um, Carol says, I find my plates warp more with the big machine. Oh, there you go. I guess it depends on how much you use your machines and what you're using them for. Um, and I think certain dyes potentially could warp them more like... Um, yeah, but potential. Well, actually, I'm not really sure. I was thinking maybe some of the larger dyes um, might potentially cause more warping. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know really. I think it comes more down to how much you're using them and if you're moving your dyes around on the die on the die plates. Uh, sorry, on the die cutting plates. Um, if you're constantly always cutting in the same spot on your plates, then yes, they're going to warp very quickly. So it is important to move, move them around to different places on your plates. There we go. So there's our little clouds. All right, my iPad is going to die very soon. So I'm just going to change my plugs over. Give me one moment. Because I'm currently not seeing comments on my computer, I'm only seeing them on my iPad. So I don't know what's going on with that. However, hubby is working from home today, so it's probably, um, the internet is probably struggling a little bit more today. So I'll just plug this in so that I don't lose you all. There we go. Okay, so now we are ready to create our scene. Oh, I just remembered I didn't stamp, I didn't create my notch for my ribbon in the top though. I should do that before I do anything else. Um, and I didn't mark this at, I didn't mark this, did I? Halfway. Three centimetres. I need to mark this at three centimetres. Um, I'll turn it up this way and I'll do it this way. So I've got that at three. And I'll just put a little notchy notch there. There we go. Oh, I went down a bit deep with that one. Oh, that's okay. Maybe we can cover it up with a cloud or something. Went a little bit too far down with that. Got a bit overexcited. All right, so we'll line that up with our notch. It's a little bit hard to see now because I've got the colour on there. It's about there. I'll try and take that in. Now, the problem is, the problem I have is I should have done that first. I'm not sure if that's going to work now. I should have done that first before I did my edges because now I can't line my tag up with these little notches here on the side because the cardstock doesn't go all the way out there. So I'm hoping that I get this lined up okay. 
So I'll just try and hold it there straight and hope for the best. Oh, phew, there we go. Okay, so I got my little notch punched in the top there for my ribbon. So that's okay. Oh, I thought I was going to wreck that then. Oh, all good. All good. It's rescued. All right, now which way did I have this? Uh, was it that way? Or was it the other way? Anyway, that should be okay, I think, like that. So we can have our little crocodile there. We can have some clouds up here. And then we could stamp our sentiment straight onto our tag this time, I think. Let's do that before we put all the pieces down because I don't want to accidentally muck up my stamping and then ruin the whole thing because that's that is a potential that is a potential um threat to the to ruining the card <laughs> so let's let's just do that i'm just going to stamp it over here and hope that i get it straight let's pop it up there Oh, phew. there we go. Okay, that worked out okay. I was a bit nervous then. I thought, oh no, if I muck this up now, I'm going to have to start my tag again. And we don't have time to do that. Okay, clean our little stampy. All right, so now we can get to creating this. All right, let's put our layers of grass on here now I like it that way or that way which way looks better which way looks better I don't think it really matters you could do it either way not too two layers of grass there sort of creating the illusion of you know little hills little rolling hills I think we might do it that way so what I might do because of the way I've done it here I might just put a little bit of glue along the edge of this one and just attach that to the back of this piece here like so There we go. And we'll just, yeah. And it doesn't matter if they're not straight because, um, it doesn't matter if they're exactly not straight because they're sort of torn edges. So it's all good. All right, and then we'll add some glue to both of those layers and we'll attach them to the tag. And I've already cut them to the correct width, which was six centimeters. So I know that they're going to fit on there okay. So there we go. All right, let's refresh this computer screen again. Let's see what is going on over here. I don't know why that keeps on going away. There we go. Okay, so there we've got our little tag and our little crocodile is gonna go there. We're going to put some trees in the background. Oh. Just some trees in the background, something like that. Yes, that would be cute. And then we'll have some clouds. Oh, we've got the flowers too, haven't we? I've got to add the flowers. I'm going to add a cloud up there somewhere and a couple down here like that. Yeah, okay, I like the trees there. You know what? I might adhere him down in place and then we can slip everything else in around him. So I haven't got dimensionals all the way around him. I've just got them and I had put them on already last night when I was creating this one. 
but I think if we attach him there on the tag and then we can put everything else in around him we can slip those in there so it's gonna be really cute so I'll have to do the card base now because I think this is going to be super cute. I'll have to add it onto a card base. But we can lay it over the top of the other one for now, just, just for looks. And I can create the rest of the, the, um, the card later. So we'll pop that tree in there. And these two over here. Um, oh, Amber said so cute. Thank you, Amber. It's coming together. It's coming together. This is the idea that I came up with overnight as I was laying in bed wide awake. <laughs> as you do. Uh, this is one of the little trees, the smaller ones. So I'll pop that in here. I'll layer that over. The big tree now there's a dimensional there somewhere because it's sticking you can feel that that's not going to go all the way in so we might just put that tree there I think oh I should have popped that one up on dimensionals actually shouldn't I I could still let's take that take that off and I'll put dimensionals on the back of that one we'll give that one a little bit of dimension layer um, it really does make a difference ah oh, yes Thank you. Yeah, it does. It's and it's just a matter of playing around too. Like once you start, I think once you start playing around with something with with your products, you start getting more and more ideas. And um, you know, like we've created a lot of projects already with this this um, suite, and so. You sort of think you sort of get to a point and you think how many more ideas can i come up with but when you start playing the ideas just keep coming they just keep keep flowing there we go all right and then we'll do some little clouds and we might pop the clouds up too hey let's put the clouds up onto some dimension give them a little bit of a pop Put that one up maybe these two actually let's just see put that one up there and these two will I do them separate or will I do them together I might put that one up there yeah Oh, I actually like the clouds up on dimensionals because it gives them a bit of shadowing. It looks the looks like they're um like they've got um sort of storm beneath them. Storm beneath them? That's not what I meant to say. I'm losing my words today. I don't know what's going on. I just got my head my head's so much in the creativity that words just are not coming today. <laughs> They look stormy, you know, they look sort of, um, you probably can't tell so much from on camera, but in real life, they look sort of more stormy with the bit of dimension to them because you've sort of got this, this shadow that's underneath them. So we'll do this one and put that one there quite close to the words and then this little one and put that down over here. There we go. Oh, it makes such a difference with that colour on them. Now we've got the little flowers too. So I think we've got enough trees. I won't do any more trees, but I'll save these for another project. And then we've got the little flowers. So what I was thinking with the little flowers is to put them, oh, maybe on this layer here. 
I'm going to use my putty end of my take a pick tool to pick them up because they're so tiny. I was thinking what if I put a few here along this layer. They would have actually been really good to tuck in under that edge there, but I think, oh no, I haven't glued that all the way. I could put them in under there. We could have a few of these little flowers. Okay, I'm getting hot now. <laughs> I'll pull those sleeves up. Uh, we could have a couple of little flowers in under there, perhaps. We had two on that side. We could have one down here. If we can get in under that edge, I just don't know how much I've glued. Let me just turn, I'm going to turn my take your pick over and use the um, the spatula end to just see if I can get in under that edge. This one I think I've glued down all the way to the edge. So I don't know if I'll get that little flower in under that edge there. Oh, we could put one there like that. Or we could just have one here like that near the near the tree or at the base of the tree maybe at the base of the tree no perhaps like that oh yeah okay let's do that just to add a little bit more color so we only want the tiniest little dab of glue to the back of that flower so we don't want that oozing Let's just tuck that in down here. Oops. Like that. And then these two, I think I'll be able to sneak them just under the edge there. Let's pop a couple down there just for added, added little pop of colour. This is a little bit of surgery here with my with my take your pick tool. There we go. So that's one and send this off the wrong way. Two. Let's um, cumul cumulonimbus. Yes, cumulonimbus clouds. That's right. Come on, little, come on, little stem. Go in there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I nearly bent my flower. Hang on a minute. I've got to lift this edge up here a little bit. Oh, I got it in just there. Let's see if I can get this one in under here a little bit. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yay. Mm, tuck that in under there. There we go. Yeah, we've got a couple of little flowers in there. And there we have it. Okay, so it looks like now he's picked some of the flowers, although these are tulips and these ones that he's carrying aren't tulips. We've got a few little few little um, flowers in there. Don't think we can get any in those other layers. This layer down here, I've stuck that all the way to the edge. Would have been good if I had have left that, but that's okay. So we've got a couple of little flowers in there anyway for a bit of colour. Uh, let me just see. I just am looking at this tree. It's looking like it's hovering in the air there. I was wondering if I put another flower sort of. No, then the flower will be hovering. No, I think I'll leave it there like that. All right, there we go. So we've got all these extra little flowers now we'll save those we'll use those on another project but there you go yeah i would have would have been better off wait uh putting those flowers in there first but that's okay i'm gonna take your pick tool did the trick and we got them in so there you go so there's my little tag up a little bit closer let's see if the camera can focus on that and then we need to add our ribbon how cute is that so super cute so adorable and we'll do the same with the ribbons we'll layer them again like we did on the other tag so we'll take out a strip of each of the ribbons 
how much did I have oh, about there I don't know how much that is trim those off layer them up Um, super cute. Oh, thank you, honeybees. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah, honeybee says now you have extra bits for the inside of the card. Yes, exactly. I'll be able to decorate the inside of the card with all those extra little bits. Great idea. All right, so we'll thread that through. And just pull that gently because we don't want to tear the top of our tag. Now that we've taken all that time to design our little tag, we don't want to damage that. Pull that through. Okay, we'll trim our ribbons. And get quite the angle I wanted on that one so I'll just trim that one up a little bit more there we go so there's our little tag so if I had that tag instead of that tag then oh, excuse the extra tail <laughs> but if I create another card base the same as this one that's what that would look like how cute would that be that would be super cute and in fact because this has got the scene on it we could put this one straight so yeah so what i'll do is i will go ahead um <laughs> oh thank you so much carol carol says oh my goodness awesome job mandy thank you very much thank you now let me just see if i have missed oh i have missed some comments let me just um, scroll back up oh Heather's here from Victoria hi Heather how are you great to have you here with us um, Carol says I need to remember to shade the edges of my die cuts it makes such a difference it really does it brings them out so much um, it just makes them and I think it makes them look more professional sort of looking and more more sort of like a scene like a cartoon sort of you know scene I, I just love that technique it's one of my favorites um uh honeybee says super cute Carol carolyn says adorable carolyn says thank you for taking us through your thought process as you create i enjoyed your life oh thank you so much carolyn so let's have a look at the original card okay so this was my original one that i created now how many years ago did i say i've lost my sticky note i had it written down on a sticky note six oh here we go 17 years ago so 17 years ago, I created this card for my husband as an anniversary card. That was my thought behind creating this card. But when I created the label on this card, I'm like, mm, I really want to create a scene card. So then I create or a scene tag. So then I created this tag today. Well, I created that one today too. That was my idea last night. And if I replaced that with that, apart from the tail, hide pretend that that extra tail isn't there, then that would look really cute on a card. So now I'm going to go ahead, once I finish this live, I'm going to go ahead and make the card base for this one. And I think I'm going to stick that one on straight. And then I'll post up photos of both of those. And I'll put them both on my blog as well. So they should be up on my blog tomorrow. But thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, it was so great to have you with me. If you're looking for any of these products and you don't yet have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, um, you are most welcome to shop with me and I would love to look after you as one of my customers. So you can find these products in my online store at mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com. Um, remember to use my May 2023 host code when you're shopping with me and orders over $75 will receive um, a tutorial bundle as well as my um, card kit for this month. I have a special card kit for those that are ordering with me this month of May. And remember to subscribe to my newsletter if you are not already subscribed to my newsletter. I did pop the, um, oh, I didn't pop the link for that one up in the comments, but I will. I'll pop the link. Oh, actually, I think the link is in the comments for that one. Um, 
But anyway, I'll double check all of those links, make sure that they're all there. And remember that I have got my Zoo Crew card class coming up as well. And if you would like to um, join in with that one, I will put all of the details in the comments as well. The cards I've created today are not part of that class. These are a different uh, a additional projects that I've created today. Um, but registrations for this one close on the 16th of May. And in the link, you'll find all of the details of the, um, the class. And I did put the link to the class in the comments towards the beginning of the video, but I'll also add it to the details too. Um, so there you go. Um, Honeybee says, thanks for sharing. Until next time, buzz you later. Good night. Thank you so much for sticking with me, honeybees. And it's lovely to have you all the way from Florida. And I hope you have a beautiful sleep. All right. Well, I will um, flip the camera back up so I can say goodbye to you face to face as I always like to do. So bear with me and I'll just do that now. We will go flippity flip and take this back up. This goes back down. That's actually got to go up higher. There we go. And we should be back up the right way and around the right way. We're just a little crooked. There we go. Okay. A little bit of light. I always like to say goodbye face to face because, you know, I think that's a polite thing to do. I'll be interested to see how the sound went today with my um, AirPods. So when I watch back the replay, I'll check on that to see if the AirPods made a difference with the sound today. Because the last couple of weeks, the sound has been going in and out, which is a bit annoying when you're watching. Um, so yeah, so we'll see how we go. But there you go. So there's my two little projects today. And as I said, I will put my little scene tag onto a card. I think that turned out super, super cute. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, but this one's just a, a little bit of a different idea. So there you go. So thank you so much for everyone for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something new. And um, I hope that that sparked your creativity as well. So if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. I'm, I'm here to help you, here to answer any questions. Um, so please feel free to get in contact with me and check for all of the links in this video as well. I will add all of those links here as well as I mentioned. So have a great rest of your day. We're coming up on the weekend. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend as well. And I look forward to seeing you all again really soon. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye.